The M1000 Classic, a beast of a gun that can deal with swarms and bosses with charged and uncharged shots. Widely considered to be the best scout primary without question. Plus, it has the reload. The Drac 25 Plasma Carbine, a clean, smooth, and deadly carbine that shoots dozens of energy balls a second. Deals amazing damage as it is super forgiving on the accuracy front as well. Seriously, look at this. I, tell me if this isn't fun, please. These two weapons dominate the scout meta and for good reason, because both of these guns are really, really good. Some of them reward accuracy with single target damage being out of the world, and the other is a super versatile weapon that rewards constant tracking and consistency with good damage. Plus, combined with some super good overclocks, and you'll realize why the deep core GK2 is, is so unused. The GK2 is your generic assault rifle. It fires fast, though not nearly as fast as the other guns in the game, does reasonable damage, and has an unhealthy spread to boot. Its slow firing speed makes it generally a direct downgrade from the plasma carbine for the simple reason that you get less than what you put in. To put it simply, it's the base weapon that the scout was designed in mind for, a middle man if you will. The M1000 takes away the fast firing speed in place of a single shot gun that does a lot of damage with pinpoint accuracy. And the Drac raises the rate of fire but lowers the damage, as well as slightly increasing the accuracy. However, there's a problem. Unlike the M1000 and the Drac, which are amazing without any upgrades, the GK2 is utterly useless without the tier 4 and tier 5 upgrades. As without them, the Scout's two other side grades simply outmatch this weapon. However, because new players don't get overclocks and don't understand the 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 the, the dis disgusting feeling of battle frenzy, they simply brush over the gun and then never use it again, leaving it to collect dust in their armory, which has made a lot of new players just simply abandon it. After all, if they can have an M1000 or a Drac, why bother with such a bad middleman? What's the point of a jack of all trades, master of none? Well, I think I know the answer, and by the end of this video, I'll explain to you why this underrated weapon is actually very, very good, in my opinion. The GK2 is probably the most simple primary in the entire game, maybe tying with the Warthog shotgun. Its shooting can only be described as an AK-47-like or a bullet pup like as if you've ever played COD or CSGO or god forbid Valorant, you'll notice its rate of fire, accuracy and damage matches the Kalishnikov's performance a lot, doing a super respectable 16 damage per bullet and stunning enemies for 1.5 seconds on weak spot hits, it's actually a super good weapon. Of course, it can't even compare to the M1000, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll continue. You can shoot magazines of 30 bullets at the rate of 8 per second, which can't even compare to the Drax 12 shots per second. <sighs> You see what I mean? Unlike the sludge pump or the auto cannon, both of which are guns that resemble an in-between before the two other primaries, are really, really good without any upgrades whatsoever. However, the GK2 is completely worse for the simple fact that it doesn't have the AoE, the damage, or the consistency that the other scout primaries have. However, that does not make it bad. In fact, this gun was designed for new players, but it might actually be better for old ones. Uh, uh... G get out of here. <laughs> See, while the Drac only has a DPS of about 108, the GK2 has a DPS of 128, which for an automatic weapon in this game is super good. It also is best used at mid-range combat, where spread is less noticeable, and in situations like that, you tear through swarms of bugs without needing to put nearly as much effort as you would if you were using the M1000. What I'm getting at here is that a jack of all trades is not a bad thing. Yes, you might sacrifice damage and consistency, but in turn, you get the most ammo efficient gun for the scout, and are good with handling for single targets, which is the M1000 specialty. And you can also melt down swarms, the Drax specialty, I, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're playing scout, you can, I mean, you can switch to drill if you want AoE. So why do players not use this weapon? Well, I think it's one, or maybe both of these two reasons. One, the M1000 or the Plasma Carbine catch the new player's attention first. If you had to choose between a one shotting accuracy-based flick monster or a boring normal assault rifle, what would you choose? 
And especially for new players, choosing the Plasma Carbine, a super accurate, fast firing, and quite honestly amazing feeling gun is a no-brainer. You simply get better options that will overshadow the GK2. Then there's the second reason, and that's that this gun without any upgrades or overclock kinda sucks. Until you're late in the game, of course. Because the GK2 has some of the best tier 4 and 5 upgrades in Deep Rock Galactic, and some of the best overclock combinations as well, he only really becomes good in the late game. Alright, let me quickly run it down for you. Gyro stabilization, supercharged feed mechanism, and improved propellant formulas are all bad upgrades. Sure, the plus 2 rate of fire or damage is, is very good, but not nearly enough to make the player go, I'm going to use this over the M1000 when you can one-shot enemies and one-shot big enemies as well. And trust me, I am biased. The M1000 is by far my favorite scout primary, but I think it's a little overrated. But I mean, in the grand scheme of things, tell me the M1000 doesn't look fun. I love getting hit. I, I love shooting my loads into head. I, I love clicking heads. Tier 2 allows you to increase the damage by 3, which I mean, don't get me wrong, that's sweet as hell, but when the plasma carbine shoots 5,000 bullets a second, and the M1000 can do 65 damage with one shot, not to mention 130 if it's charged, it, it doesn't really put the gun in, you know, the best light. Floating barrel and high capacity magazines are also pretty mid. Sure, one of them nearly doubles your accuracy, but I mean, with the overclocks that we're shooting for, accuracy is not going to be a problem, bro. It also just makes it a worse drag, so, uh... And the magazine increase, uh, well, I mean, that's actually really good as well. I just wish they didn't put it next to, you know, one of the best GK upgrades, but... But in tier 4, you get hardened rounds, which uh, I don't get because I like flanking and then going with my boomstick, but this makes you one of the best support classes in the entire game. Allowing Praetorians to basically not exist in a team is, is very, very powerful, and having the ability to do it from any range, unlike the Cryo Cannon, is invaluable. And that 20% weak point damage, while not massive, still buffs your damage from 16 to 19. And hey, I understand what you're saying. And I know that this weapon, you know, it still kind of blows. So let me introduce you to the funnest upgrade in the entire game. The entire reason I'm making this video, Battle Frenzy. Ignore the other two upgrades because this one, this one is the best. Movement. It's the name of the game when it comes to Scout, and so far your only consistent forms of it is, is the grappling hook. And don't get me wrong, the grappling hook is very, very good, but it has a cooldown and, you know, it's not always active and blah, blah, blah. If only you had a double jump, you know what I mean? Sure, you can run the Zukovs, but I, I mean, I hate two-shotting bosses with explosive bullets, and I like guns that go boom, so, so I didn't run it now. However, with this upgrade, you get the god-gifted rush of speed when you kill an enemy. Any enemy, mind you. And this upgrade? This upgrade slaps harder than JD Mayhem did in episode 5 of Slap Mountain Mayhem Family Grudge Match. Commented over by JJT Tilly and Jesus himself. Slaps harder than the subscribe button. <laughs> I want you to look at this graph, uh, but please help me. Anyways, now you can finally put the movement into movement shooter. I, I don't want anyone to question the statement, alright? Take a look at this clip where I get a kill on this grunt, run all all the way over like it's my eternal reward and then boom two slugs into the back stab and this clip where i just don't stop moving i can't be here i'm invincible if you've never tried this upgrade do it because you become super super fast and mobile which is something that doesn't really happen as all classes have their speed capped down i mean you the scout which holds a lightweight weapon walks at the same speed as the gunner who's holding a bloody minigun so this actually makes you feel like your namesake now this simple upgrade bumps the class's primary from one of the worst guns in the entire game to a solid, more mobility-focused side grade that allows for the generous use of your gun while dodging other things. And this is where this gun shines. You do good damage, yes, but with the advantage of moving fast, which, mind you, is the counter to 90% of the enemies in this game, it's a sweet-ass gig. Swarms will feed you a constant stream of speed that will never stop and you'll feel amazing. And I understand that Scout has other mobility uh, overclocks and upgrades. For example, the hover clock, which basically gives you infinite airtime, but I mean, it's just not the same. However, you know the biggest downside of the weapon, the spread and the inconsistency? Well, there's an overclock called AI Stability Engine, and it turns this gun into the perfect middle ground. You have the perfect accuracy and thick 
juicy damage of the M1000 and the automatic firing plus accurate bullet of the Drac. To put it simply, this overclock just turns your GK2 into a Drac laser carbine, except it shoots slower and does approximately five times more damage. And let me tell you, it is really damn good. And combined with the battle frenzy, uh, it's fun. Oh, and there's also uh, an electrifying reload, which is like, I mean, it might be good on Drac be be because it has bullets that deal very little damage. Um, but with the GK2, you'll probably never need to use this on a swarm. I understand how powerful basically freeze locking a frame is, but like, you have an EMP grenade right on you. Like, just throw the throw the electric grenade, please. Then there are bullets of mer mercy, which is uh, dis disgustingly OP if you have a cryo or uh, or just a normal driller on your team. However, without a driller, uh, <laughs> it's ass. It has a 0.6 times magazine, which is bad. But if your tryharding has a five and you have a coordinated team, I mean, this is this is an amazing overclock. You can also overclock your firing mechanism, which will double your damn recoil because you know we all needed that. But at least you get a uh, you get to fire fast. Uh, this is not really worth it either. It's it's kind of bad. If you get this, uh, if you get this, just invest all your upgrades into damage for the drac and, and you'll get the jig. <laughs> and then there are the clean overclocks. But but damn, is AI the way to go? Because it makes this gun fun and it makes this gun really damn good. So here's why this gun is underrated. It is super versatile and can turn into one of the best of both worlds weapons in the entire game. However, because it's super underwhelming, a lot of new players drop it before they find its glorious upgrades in the late game. However, with the right decisions, this can actually be one of the best weapons in Scout's arsenal. Plus, the speed bonuses easily allows for the primary secondary combo that Scout is just made to, to, to you know, be played with. It's, it's really fun, try it please. And it allows me to absolutely shred with the boomstick. But before I conclude, I want to mention what is probably the most important part of the gun, and that's its design. Scout has a common thread to him, and that's his design. The M1000 is crisp and has this godly M4 reload. The drag is smooth as hell, and it feels genuinely futuristic and alien. And while all these guns feel kind of weightless, I think that's the point. These guns are supposed to be light and not having a massive kickback is part of the appeal. However, the GK2 is different because even though it is genuinely, you know, generally pretty light compared to the other guns in the game, it has a kick to it. It has a weight to it. Every bullet feels like it's actually important. The beautiful AK-47 style shooting, the tactile crunch of the firing, like the clicking of the mechanical keyboard, like damn. It feels really damn good. Combined with the speed boost and everything I've mentioned before, it, I mean, and, and the gun feeling thick, I, I, I don't think enough people appreciate it, and that's why I think this gun is underrated. I understand that the feel isn't for everyone, but man, do I love it. The GK2 may not be as reliable or as consistently powerful as the Drac and the M1000, and, and let me be honest, nothing in the game will replace the M1000's place as the best scout weapon. It, it's just not gonna happen. But at the end of the day, this gun is still in the game for a reason, and that's why I crown the GK2 as the most underrated weapon in the entire game, which, I mean, I technically guess isn't a compliment, but um, uh, but it's a good weapon. Please, please use it. Well, try it out. Thank you for, for watching everything uh, again. Comments are amazing, and they make me uh, smile a lot, and I'll say thank you and be very grateful. Also, please do subscribe to... My, my sub to non-sub ratio is uh, not edited, and I, I think that's pretty sad. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go back to my editing dungeon. Bye-bye.